Google Ads lookalike audiences are designed to help you find potential new customers that, as the name suggests, look like your existing customers. Now, if you're familiar with lookalike audiences on Meta Ads or Snap, these work in a relatively similar way, but with a little bit of Google flair. So in this video, let's talk about how Google Ads lookalike audiences work and talk about where you can leverage them in your account. Unlike some other audience types that we've covered on this channel, the easiest way for us to go through all of the considerations about lookalike audiences in Google Ads is actually to create a new campaign to start. I'm in our Paid Media Pros placeholder account, so we shouldn't have to really blur anything out this time, so that's great. To create a new campaign, let's go over to the blue plus button, click New Campaign. I'm gonna go ahead and create a campaign without a guidance. And then the first limitation that comes with lookalike audiences in Google Ads is going to be the campaign type that you can use. Although there are eight lined up here, only one of them is eligible for lookalike audiences, and it's the one that I'm on right now. Demand generation is the only campaign type that you can use lookalike audiences with in Google Ads. They are not eligible for performance max, display, search, any of that stuff. So if you wanna leverage lookalikes, you're going to have to use a demand gen campaign. We'll skip through the rest of the setup around conversion goals, all that good stuff. And even for now, I'm not gonna go through all of the different campaign goals, conversion targeting. If you're interested in that type of rundown for demand gen, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. For now, I'm gonna just jump straight to the audiences section, which lives in the ad group settings. And we'll scroll all the way down past all of these things as well. And now we can see the audience section is set up here. I'm gonna click add audience. There are already some audiences that have been built in the past, but we don't wanna use those. We're gonna to come to new audience. I'm gonna put in just a placeholder name so it doesn't throw any errors. And now there are four categories of audience targeting that we can use for demand gen. We can use custom segments, your data, interests and detailed demographics, and the one we're gonna focus on today, lookalike segments. So as I mentioned earlier, lookalike segments are designed to help you find new users that look like your existing audiences. But there's a little bit more criteria to that that we need to cover. If we go into add or create a lookalike segment, you can see that there's nothing that's gonna show up here. You can see that if we had some existing, they would show up here, you could find them in browse. But let's go ahead and create a new lookalike segment. And I should call out, you can only create these lookalike segments in this audience builder flow in a demand gen campaign. If you were to try to go into audience manager, just for the entire Google Ads account, you cannot create lookalike audiences there. They have to be created in this process, in this flow. So unless the user interface refreshes and there's a different look to it, it'll probably look pretty similar to this. Again, I'm gonna give it a name, but then the next criteria I wanna talk about is the seed list that you can use. So if I come in here to add your data segments, it'll start off on search, but if I go to browse, you can see there are three main categories here, website visitors, YouTube users, and customer lists. I call these out because these are all first party data categories of audiences in Google Ads, and these are the only types of audiences you can use for seed lists. It all has to come from your set of information. You're not gonna be able to create lookalikes off of any of the in-market or affinity audiences or anything else of that nature. It has to be something based on these three main categories. So let's go ahead and say I wanted to add some of these users. We'll go ahead and add customer list. But then the next thing that I wanna call out is that we can use multiple different first party audiences in our seed list. As you can see up here at the top, we wanna to include users who are similar to your set of customers that we're trying to find. And you can include up to 10 seed lists for this individual lookalike segment. Now, the reason that that matters is because you need to have enough users in this seed list to be able to create a lookalike audience. Let's hop into a help article real quick. In this requirement section, you can see in this singular bullet point here that the sum of all submitted seed lists must be over 100 active matched people. What that means is that when I applied those three lists, I could have one that had 50 people, one that had 25, and one that had 26, and that gets me over 100, and now those three seed audiences combined can create a lookalike audience. But if it was lower than that, they cannot. So just think that even if your individual seed lists are not over 100 active people, you can combine those with additional audiences to hit that minimum. Now, just while we're here, a couple other things. 
your lookalike segment will be automatically refreshed every one to two days based on your available customer data. So in the example that I used, I had an audience that was based on a customer list, one from a YouTube list, and one from website visitors. That customer list, unless I have it automatically refreshing, is pretty static, so it's gonna be the same. But the YouTube and website audiences are going to be based on user behavior, and if all of a sudden all of my YouTube users and all of my website users go away, I'm not gonna have the right amount of people, and my seed list after those one to two days is going to be too low. My lookalike audience won't be created. It says down here, it could take up to three days for your lookalike segment to reflect that failed seed list requirement and stop targeting users. But there will be a status marker next to your lookalike segments if you need to check it at any point. When choosing these seed lists, it's always important to choose users who have high value for your company. If you're trying to find more people who are like your customers, or the all converters, that's probably a pretty good segment, depending on what those different levels are. In this example, anybody who viewed any video in the last year and a half, probably not a great audience to try and target for lookalikes, depending on what your campaign goals are. Remember, this is demand gen. So if you're just trying to find more people to fill the top of the funnel, maybe this audience is a good option. But if you're really trying to make sure that you're bringing in a little bit warmer lead and trying to find a very specific set of users, you're probably gonna wanna have something more that's either a customer list or even a list of qualified leads and if you're an e-commerce company, you might be looking for people who have purchased or even people who have a higher lifetime value, either through a bigger amount that they purchased that one time or regular returning customers, whichever makes sense for you. Outside of the seed list, there's a couple other things that you need to set up for lookalike segments in Google Ads. The next option is gonna be locations. So if you remember similar audiences from Google Ads in the past, those did not require anything from you. They basically were automatically created when your audience had a good model and it could target anywhere in the world. Now for lookalikes, pretty similar to Facebook, you need to include which countries you're going to use this lookalike audience in. For this, I can add in United States. I could add in Ireland. Any combinations of countries that you might want to use this audience in, you can add in that country. So my suggestion would be to you, if you know you're going to target a country, obviously include it in here, but if you might potentially target a country in the future, go ahead and include it in here. That way you don't have to adjust things later. It'll already be populated and you'll be ready to go. Now the last piece is going to be the segment reach. And this is gonna talk about how broad of an expansion you want Google to use when it's trying to find lookalike users based on your seed list. The default is going to be a balanced approach where you're going to have 5% of the population of the countries that you've targeted up here. So in this example, this lookalike segment at the end of it, the size should be the total of 5% of the population of the United States plus 5% of the population of Ireland. So for just some rough estimates, let's assume, which I think, the population of the United States is about 330 million people. That means at a 5% mark, we're gonna target about 16.5 million people with this balanced approach. You can go as high as 10% of the population or as low as 2.5% of the population. I'm probably always gonna suggest that you start off with a more narrow reach, and if you see good performance, then expand into balanced or broad targeting. But again, it depends on your campaign goals and what you're trying to do. Filling the top of the funnel, maybe broad is a great way to go about it. But if you're trying to have warmer leads or you have a really specific product type that isn't really a good fit for a mass audience, maybe narrow is gonna be the right option. Once you're finished with this, all you need to do is click save. And now that lookalike example audience will populate over the next few days, like the help article said, and that's going to be who you target in this demand gen ad group. You can still combine lookalike segments with interests and detailed demographics, as well as any other first party data source or custom segment that you have. And you can also still apply any of the exclusions and narrow by the demographics that you need to have applied to your campaigns. And then let's say, for example, I'm done setting up this ad group. I'm only gonna target the lookalike audience. I can click save, finish setting up the rest of my campaign, hit launch and be good to go. Now, as I mentioned, this is our placeholder account. So I don't have any performance data to show you, but there are a few places that you'll be able to find the performance of that lookalike audience, depending on how you have things set up. So just for fun, we're gonna hop into this client account, which then of course means things have to be blurred out, but we do have some demand gen running here, just not lookalikes. 
The first place we'll be able to find this performance is going to Audiences in the Audiences Keywords and Content tab. Here we can just open up the Audience Segment table. And in this table down below, we would then be able to see the performance of our individual lookalike audiences in this chart. As I mentioned, we don't have any in here, but this is where they would show up. Now, a second place, if I head into campaigns and I just click into any of our demand gen campaigns, if you retain the type of targeting that I had in my example, where I only applied a lookalike audience to that ad group, as long as you gave it a name that was pretty clear, you could report on just lookalike audiences by using just the ad group line item. If that's the only targeting you have in there, you'll pretty much be able to see how that lookalike segment is performing just at the ad group level because that's the only thing driving the performance. Now your campaign structure might not always lend itself to that, but if it can, this is a very easy way to see the performance that we've got. But then the other option is when you're in your individual campaign or quite frankly at the account level, you can come over here to reports, head to performance summary, and then click on audiences. And then this report will give you much of the same insights we got on the audiences tab. It's just in a little different format and you can add a lot of other columns here to make this report even more useful. So there's a lot of ways you'll be able to understand how your lookalike audience is performing compared to all of your other targeting types. And then you could also compare how different lookalike audiences are performing compared to each other to understand which seed list or combination of seed lists is performing best. Overall, lookalike audiences are pretty straightforward. There's just a real limitation on where we can use them in Google Ads. So if you wanna use lookalike audiences, just be prepared to run a demand gen campaign. If you have any additional questions about lookalike audiences in Google Ads or anything else about demand gen or any of the other campaign types in Google Ads, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.